Annabelle, I'm interested. Why do you hate me? What for did you want to go and marry my father? I love him. Well, he don't love you. No? No, nobody could. You're an ugly, nasty old thing, and I I don't want you for a mother. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear that, because I certainly don't want anybody who's stupid for a daughter. Uh, I'm not stupid. I'm smart. Smart? Why, you can't even make up an interesting lie. I saw the cook cutting up something funny. Maybe it's cat. And I saw a tough-looking man going down to the cellar. Well, I could do better than that with using only half my brain. I wasn't using any brain, so there. Uh-huh. Huh. You, you think you're smart, don't you? Much smarter than you, and I can prove it. Listen, two little rabbits named Christopher and Gwendolyn went into the woods one day and had a whole bunch of very interesting experiences. Now, if you and I were both to think about that, I'll bet I could tell a much better story than you. Smarty, you already know the answer. No, I don't. But just to make it harder, I may even write mine like a poem with rhymes and everything. And when I've finished, why, then you'll realize what a really stupid little girl you are. I'm going now. I'll have Franklin take your breakfast to your room just in case you want to smell it. I've got a cold, so there. And you can take the food because I won't eat it. All right. I only hope you won't find it too hard to think on an empty stomach. The 34 sales on shoes, Miss Mayo. I tell you, we've got to have it. Well, I'm looking for it, Mr. Lenning, but nobody but Miss Knott knows where those things are. Well, Mr. Lenning, about that special sale. Just a moment, Mr. Hoyt. I think my problem no, is if wait. it's more important, Mr. Please. Lenning. Hey, well, somebody shut that door. Now, what is it? Well, this my department will have to right? know where to go ahead please, with Please, please. Hello. Don't bother me. Agnes, can't you take some of those calls? I'm sorry, sir, but Miss Scott didn't Miss tell Scott, me. Miss Scott, will you stop talking about Miss Scott? I told you an hour ago to get her on the telephone. Tell her I said she's got to come down here. Now. Gertrude. May I come in? Of course. Is your house now? Oh, please. Don't just walk out on me. It's very important. Well... First of all, I know you won't believe it, but I love your brother. I've loved him for six years. I know what his life has been. And loving him, I want to help him find happiness again. I want him to know for the first time what a real home can mean. I want mostly for his sake for him to recover some normal instincts. Towards you, you hope. Towards any woman. And why not me? Oh, can't you see? With your help, I could... Pardon me, Mrs. Lenning, but it's a store again on the telephone. Oh, tell them I'm indisposed. But they said it was important. Uh, what shall I say, ma'am? Tell them I took poison. Tell them anything you want, but I'm not going down there. Yes, ma'am. Some more of your great consideration for my brother. Yes, it is. He can get along without me at the store. It means inconvenience and readjustment, but he can do it. What I'm really needed is here. Oh. Oh, Gertrude, now don't freeze up on me. I need your help. I'm asking for it. If from now on we could just work together on this thing. For instance, Annabelle... My I... niece is not a department of the store, Miss Scott. I'm afraid you can't take an inventory and then reorganize her. But we can. At least I want to try to. Look, Gertrude, you've seen more of her than anyone else. Tell me about her. What are her interests? What does she like to do? What does she Miss like... Scott, Annabelle's interests are no concern of yours. And the less you have to do with her, or with me, the better I like it. All right. I should have known better than to expect your understanding or your help. You're a bitter, frustrated old maid, Gertrude Lenning, and the natural enemy of every woman who loves and wants to be loved by a man. You're going to take out your bitterness on the entire feminine world as long as you live, even if it costs your brother's happiness to do it. It is a job, Richard, and I'll need your advice. I know, I know, but the important thing is that I need you at the office. Julia, you have no idea. Mail, files, appointments, everything in a mess. Then hire somebody who can straighten them out. You haven't answered my question about Annabelle. Oh, good Lord, how do I know what a child's interests are? A lot of impossible things. Going to public school, wanting roller skates so that you can see with anybody and everybody on the street, and insisting on going to those serial movies every Saturday afternoon. I don't know what you Are mean. those things impossible? You wouldn't give your permission. Of course not. A child of Annabelle's background? Richard, the trouble with Annabelle's background is that it's fat, flat and deadly and unbearably dull. The child wants a little adventure. And what does she get? A new batch of toys from the store. Now, Julia, please don't complicate Complicate? Look, am I in charge of this home or not? Yes, but... All right, then. Just leave Annabelle to me. All right, but Julia, for heaven's sake, forget this nonsense. Get it out of your system and come back to work. never attended public school before? No, she's always had tutors. I don't know just what grade she's really eligible for. I ought to be the fifth grade. We'll soon find that out, Mrs. Lenny. Come, Annabelle. Hey, hey, whoa. Whoa, let's rest a minute. I'm done. 
turn in. Well, all I can say is oh. you certainly look like 14 kinds of a soup oh. on roller skates at your age. Just the same, I beat you. Well, you are to. You're older, aren't you? Now, that's what I call a swell movie. Well, every man to his own opinion. Bet you that G-Man gets out of the burning house next week. You know, generally speaking, I think that's a pretty good bet. <laughs> And don't think I haven't watched you. For weeks you've been indulging the child in all sorts of vulgarity, making a spectacle of yourself, skating on the streets, trying to bribe her into accepting... That's her. not true. Maybe you call it indulging Annabelle to let her live a normal life for her years, but I don't. Oh, you're quite concerned about normal lives, aren't you? I've seen from the first what you've tried to do. You thought you'd bring Richard around by making a fuss over his daughter. <gasps> Gertrude, you'd better stop. I want to keep my temper with you, but I don't, don't see... bother. And just in case you're interested in how your little plan has worked, Annabelle told me yesterday that she hates you. She hates you just as much now as the first day you came in this house. That's a lie, Julia. I never said that. Annabelle, what were you doing behind that curtain? Were you listening? What do you think? That I'm a stool pigeon or something? I was on the window seat writing something when you came in, and, and Aunt Gertrude lied. I never said I hated you. I'm glad, Annabelle. Well, that doesn't mean I love you either. Well, you can feel... Well, sort of neutral about someone, can't you? Yes, Annabelle, you can. New Lennings are swell at that. Um, what you crying about? I'm not crying. Oh, I suppose that's rain or something rolling down the side of your nose. And you said I was a bum liar. And <laughs> did I? Sure, remember you said I couldn't make up a rhyme about some rabbits named Gwendolyn and Christopher? Well, listen to this. Christopher and Gwendolyn went walking one day, and they met a bear in the woods far away. He ate them both with a knife and fork, and that was the end of the rabbit's walk. There. Hmm, not bad. A little gory, but good. You certainly got rid of them fast, didn't you? Oh, I'll get them out of it in the next episode, but I'm busy with the music now. Oh, there's music, too. Sure, I made it up on my piano. Listen. Christopher and Gwendolyn went walking one day, and they met a bear in the woods far away. Oh, from then I'm unstuck. (laughs) Bravo! Bravissimo! Why, Mr. Edwards. Don't mind me. Go right on with the opera. Annabelle, this is Mr. Edwards, the man your daddy bought the Philadelphia store from. Mr. Lenning's daughter. Hello. Charm, my fair lady. Does Richard know you're here? I thought you were supposed to be managing the Philadelphia Emporium Deluxe. Yes, but it seems as I anticipated that I'm definitely ungood as a department store manager. The situation in dear old Philadelphia is completely blotto. Hence, Lafayette, I am here. <laughs> Don't mind the gentleman, Annabelle. I think he's a little cracked. You're telling me. <laughs> oh, you're both too kind. Oh, Julia, it's like this. Mm-hmm. Richard Fields, the store down there, needs reorganization. Here's a report of condition that Jessup made up. You're supposed to read it and then tell me how to start changing things. But why didn't Richard telephone me? Said you'd refuse. Mm. If I came, he knew you couldn't resist my charms. Oh, all right. Give me the report. I want to finish our song. A great idea. You run along and read that, Julia. Little Miss uh, Saucy Pants and I will do some composing. <laughs> all right. Now, let's see those words. Uh, here, and the music's supposed to go like this. Gwendolyn and Peter went a walking up a hill. They walk and walk and walk and walk. In fact, they're walking still. I don't want to go to bed. I'm having too much fun. Uncle Jerry, that's keen. How is it, Julia? A little more humane. But now we'd better get down to business. I finished this report, Mr. Edwards, and uh, I find it. Uncle Jerry. Yes, Uncle Jerry. And the first thing you've got to do down there is to reorganize the advertising staff. I find Oh, it... yes. Uh... And another thing. Your window displays, they've got to be made much Wait more a minute, attractive. Wait a Annabelle, another verse. Listen. Listen, Jerry, if Richard wants us to straighten out oh, the store business, we've got to get... Oh, but that's not as important as a new verse for Gwendolyn, is it, but, Annabelle? Uh, no. You see? Listen. <laughs> they saw some snails with great big horns and bonnets on their heads. They lived in shells, and in their shells, they slept in feather beds. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, all together. <laughs> they, they saw some shells, shells and great big horns and bonnets on their heads. They, they lived in shells, and in their shells, they slept in feather beds. I don't want to go to bed. I'm having too much fun. Very uh, <laughs> well. Julia. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh. Oh, hello, Richard. Uh, do you suppose he doesn't like music? Gosh, he looked mad. I had better go see. You two go ahead. Hello, Richard. Richard, you look terribly annoyed, darling. I sent Edwards here because the Philadelphia store is in a mess. I wanted you to give him advice, and how do you give it to him? By sitting on the floor singing a lot of nonsense. Some high spirits that needed blowing off, that's all. And as for the store report, I've read it and I... not just this, Julia. It's everything these last weeks. You've changed. You were someone I thought I could count on, and instead of helping me, you let me down completely. I might almost say criminally. In other words, I haven't lived up to our marriage bargain, is that it? Well, you don't need to put it exactly that way. Why not? Richard, you say I've changed. I have. It happened the moment I stepped foot in this house as your wife. It was home here, and I loved it. 
I was a woman, a woman for the first time, and I loved that too. In other words, by marrying you, I lost a valuable partner and acquired a woman. Someone who would blithely wreck my business while sitting home singing nonsense in the living room with a man. Oh, Richard. You sound jealous. I am not. Told you once that that part of my life is completely dead. With it went all interest in women, as you're trying to be a woman. And furthermore, if you want the truth, it doesn't become you. You're no longer the Julia Scott I can admire. This change has made you ludicrous, if not downright pathetic. Thanks. I was curious about how you really saw me. Oh, now, Julia, I mean... You're right, Richard. Perfectly right. I did let you down. I didn't live up to our bargain at all, so I'm going to do something about it. Now, Julia, I don't mean turning around and going to extremes, but you could help a little right now, for instance... For instance, go down and take charge in Philadelphia. Get the store there up to the famous Lenning Standard of Efficiency. Is that it? Well, yes, Julia, if you could. Oh, I could, Richard. And I shall. You can depend on me. Oh, that's fine, fine. I know you understand, and it shouldn't take long. But... That's where you're wrong, Richard. You have no idea how long it may take. In fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised if I never got back from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> 